So in these two examples, we are going to look at what you expect to win on average from these games. We're also going to look at standard deviation in our second example to get some more practice with that. Because getting the standard deviation from this discrete probability distribution can be a little tricky. So we're going to start off with looking at a game where you pay $5 for a spinner game. So here's the spinner with three sections. If you land on the win, you get a $10 bill. And if it lands on the green or the blue, you lose your $5. So if you lose, you're out negative five. We're gonna use negative numbers to represent losing. And it looks like you have a two thirds chance of you losing. We're going to assume that it's equally likely to land on any of those spaces on that spinner. So to win, you'd have to land on the third that is red and you would win and have $5 profit. Now the reason why that's five is because you're paying $5 for the spinner game and if you land on win, you get $10. So if you've given them five and you win 10, then you have a profit of $5. So what are your chance, what is your expected value or what is the average result per spin? five times a third would give you your x times the p of x. And if you haven't watched the previous video, the reason why we're multiplying our event times its probability is because the sum of the event times the probability gives us our theoretical average, which in this case is given by the Greek letter mu. So here I'm going to take my negative 5, which is my event, and multiply it by 2 thirds. And there's my x times p of x. So if I go 5 times a third, this gives me 1.6 repeating, or I'm going to round it to 1.67, $1.67. Now if I multiply the negative 5 times 2 thirds, this gives me negative $3.33 because it's 3.3 repeating. Now if I add these together, because the sum would then be the total here, the $1.67 minus the $3.33 would give me negative 1.66. So what this means is that the expected value is losing or negative $1.66 per game. So this is the theoretical average. You would lose $1.66 per game. So the gambler would want to play this game and hopefully win the $10 bill after paying five and then hopefully stop playing while they're ahead. But this game is definitely skewed in favor of the the casino or whoever is running this little um, spinner game because the person who's playing is at a disadvantage at a dollar sixty six per game so let's take a look at this bet suppose you will pay twenty dollars if you lose the how many fingers am I secretly holding up game so losing twenty dollars if somebody holds their hands behind their back and holds up a certain number of fingers and then has you try to guess. Now the probability is pretty easy if, if you just think about, well, they could hold up um, one finger through 10. We're not going to include the fact that they could hold up zero. So let's just say that they could hold up one finger through 10 fingers and that would give you one possibility of winning. Like if I was holding up six, your chances of winning would be 1 out of 6 or 1 out of 10 since there are 10 possibilities 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and only one of them was correct in this case it would have been six fingers that means there's 9 out of 10 ways to lose the two probabilities have to add up to 100% or else this isn't a discrete probability distribution now if you win you get $50 notice in this game we're not actually 
paying into play. In the previous game, we paid $5, and if we won, we get 10 This one's a little bit different, and I feel like there are more problems in the book and the XYZ homework that fit this kind of a problem, whereas you will lose a certain amount if you lose the game, and you win a certain amount if you win the game, so you're not paying in $20 to win this 50 So let's do our X of P of X. So if I go at 5 times... Uh, 0.1 or $50, excuse me, times 0.1, that's 50 times 0.10, that's my x times p of x, that gives me a 5. And now I'm going to take my negative 20 and multiply that by 0.90, which is 9 out of 10, or 0.9, and that's going to give me negative 18. So this game is definitely favored in skew of the gambler or the person who's making uh, this game possible. Not the person who's guessing, but the person who is holding their hands behind their back and, you know, doing that. So the 5 and the negative 18 make a total of negative 13. So that is our average. Our average is we're going to be losing about $13 every time we play this game. So let's do our x minus mu quantity squared. So here we have our x, which in this case is 50. And then we're going to subtract our negative 13 and then square it. Now if you're typing this in on a calculator, you're going to have to be very careful because you're going to have to subtract the negative. But one of the cool techniques that you may have learned in your basic math class is when you subtract a negative, you can swipe swipe and it's like adding a positive. Then we multiply that by the probability here, which is one-tenth. And if we do this correctly, we get a pretty big number, 396.9. So down in this blank here, we are going to take our negative 20 event and subtract negative 13, our average. We'll square it. We'll do our little swipe swipe so we have the negative 20 plus the 13. And then we're going to multiply this by 9 tenths, and we get an answer of 44.1. Now we're going to have a total here. If we add up these two numbers, we get 441. This here is our lowercase sigma squared, also known as the variance. The variance tells us how far apart our numbers are spread. 441 is a big number, and that uh, tells us our numbers are spread apart, but it's going to be a little bit better if we take the square root of 441 to get the standard deviation. The standard deviation tells us our bound of normality. So the standard deviation of 441 is 21. So the $21 standard deviation means that we're on average going to lose $13, give or take 21. Now if you take $21 away from negative 13, you get actually lower than the $20 you've paid. Now if you add the 21 to the negative 13, you're not going to be that positive. So it's not a great game to play. This is just one of these games that with a 1 in 10 chance of winning your mu, which is your chance of, uh, your I'm sorry, not your chance, but your mu, which is your um, expected value, is losing $13. Yeesh. So, this is just not too great. I feel that the standard deviation tells you that you're normally not going to win that much money, so this is a good game to avoid. Well, I hope that you've learned um, a little bit more about finding the expected value and also finding the standard deviation of a discrete probability distribution formula.